Hey everybody, how is everyone? I see we've got um, several people in here, so I'm so glad to see you all. It looks like my microphone is working. It looks like my camera is working. So hopefully you guys can see and hear me. I'd love it if somebody could just drop down in the comments and confirm that you can see and hear me. Um, hi Jenny, hi Arlette, good morning. It's 10 o'clock here on the West Coast. I know for some of you, it is probably afternoon over on the East Coast. Uh, thanks for joining me. As many of you know, my name's Charlene and I'm on the design team for Picket Fence Studios. And I do the lives on Tuesdays at 12 noon central time here on the Picket Fence Studios YouTube channel. So we've got uh, a lot of fun stuff to get into today. I have some really fun techniques I'm looking forward to sharing with you. Oh good, everyone can hear me. Hi Heather, hi Kathy, hi Sue, hi Ann, hi Rhonda, great, yay. Um, feel free to chat in the comments you guys, let everyone know where you're from. Uh, if you have a question, just post that there in the comments. It's really helpful if you put question in all caps at the beginning, it helps me see it. But I'll occasionally be popping over there and making sure I'm not missing anything. Okay, I'm gonna put you guys down on my desk. And, oh, real quick, look guys, I got my hair cut. It's not wild anymore. Um, <laughs> I was really happy about that. This one, yay, hello. Okay, so part of the new release is this super cute stencil. This is the Baking at Home A2 stencil. And I'm gonna show you how to do something really fun with your inks and your paper glaze. So I wanna get this started first um, so that hopefully it will dry by the time we are ready for it. So I've just got a piece of cardstock here, a piece of 80 pound Nina cardstock. And I'm going to get my Arctic Fox. You guys know I love, this is my favorite color. It's, well, it's not really a color, it's white, right? Um, but it is my favorite paper glaze Lux. It is a stash staple in my opinion. I use it at least once a week on cards. I mean, I use it a lot because it is white and shiny and it's got little glitter bits in it and it's just great for small accents. But I'm gonna show you how to do something extra fun with it today. I'm gonna put my stencil here and on the A2 stencils there, it's kind of hard to see here on camera, but there is a line outlining exactly where to put your cardstock. So that way the stencil is perfectly centered on an A2 size card. So we've got it on there, we're looking pretty good. Now you could put um, some repositionable spray on there, some pixie spray or something like that. I did do that uh, when I was making my sample card, but we're gonna we're gonna live dangerously, you guys. We're just gonna go for it here. So here's that Arctic Fox. It's this beautiful, sparkly goodness. And when it dries, it dries opaque. So if you uh, put this over, you know, like blue cardstock or something like that. When it dries, it'll be all white. So for example, this would look amazing as white clouds on blue cardstock. Or if you wanted to, you know, have pink cardstock and you used a stencil with hearts, you could do white hearts. But what I'm gonna show you is something, a fun little thing you can do with it to make it even more versatile. So I'm just smoothing my paste here on here. You can hear that kind of scratchy sound if you're not familiar with the Paper Glaze Luxes. Um, the Lux means that there is a insane amount of glitter and sparkly goodness in it. So if you're ever looking at the products and going, okay, I don't understand why this one is called this or this one's called that. 
I'll give the breakdown to you while we're doing this. The Lux means it's got all that glittery goodness, so it's gonna have kind of that scratchy sound to it. The Velvet, uh, it kind of dries um, to a matte sort of finish, and it has like a very soft feel to it. And then we have Glitz, Paper Glaze, or paper glitz, which is super duper 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 sparkly and glittery. Uh, and it's kind of just sparkly. It comes in different colors of sparkly, if that makes sense. And if you go on the Pick Event Studios website, on the main page there's a graphic that shows all the different kinds. And we'll give you that over overview and you can see what the finishes are. So I've smoothed that all out. I'm gonna just peel this up here. Okay, and I've got a little dish of soapy water that I can't reach <laughs> over here. Get in there, stencil. Okay, there we go. And we're gonna set this aside to dry. But you could see if I had done that with ink, it would also look really cool. You've got your little mixer, your measuring um, scale, some pitchers, little heart cups, a bowl, and some canisters. Very cute and sweet. So we'll set this aside to dry. And while that's drying, we're gonna get to work on something separate we're gonna do. So this, this is an incredibly cute stamp set. I think I showed this to you guys just briefly last week, but we're gonna use it today. This is the sugar and calorie free cake set. So it's got one, two, three, four, five, six different cakes, and they're all very cute and large and makes it easy to color. I'm gonna pull this one off right here. This is my favorite one. I like them all, but this one is my favorite. And there are several coordinating, or there's coordinating dies that go for the whole set. Not just the images, but also the um, fun sentiments that you have in there. Grab my Mini Misty here. I'm gonna stamp this out on some smooth cardstock here. And I'm gonna use black hybrid ink. It's hybrid, so that means it has uh, both pigment and dye qualities, meaning that you can use it for lots of different techniques. You can use it for watercoloring over once it's dry, and you also can use it with alcohol-based products. So Copic markers, Olo markers, Spectrum Noir, whatever you have. But it'll also work with water brush markers or watercoloring. Isn't that cute? with a little um, decorations on top, the sun and all that stuff, love it. All right, I'm gonna set this aside. Now you do wanna let it dry just a little bit. And I'm just, because normally I would just wait a minute and let it dry, but since I'm live, I'm gonna hit this with my heat tool here just to make sure that ink is all dry. This also depends on the type of paper you're using. Since I'm using ultra smooth cardstock, it does tend to um, need that dry time because it doesn't soak into the paper as quickly as say it would on a Nina 80 pound cardstock. And now we are going to color. I am not gonna be doing any fancy coloring, you guys. If you know me, I like to do quick especially when I'm doing lives. So we're gonna come in here first with, these are Olo markers. Um, this is the blue 2.2, B2.2. And I'm just gonna give an all over 
all around all of the little clouds and stars and all of that goodness. Let me see if I can zoom in for you guys. No, I'm all the way in. Okay. Hopefully you can see my coloring okay. I'm not doing anything fancy here. I'm just kind of trying to fill in this space. How is everybody today on this Tuesday? My middle schooler is home sick, which is a bummer. Hopefully he feels better soon. Arla, you like dyes for sentiments? Me too. I find it so, so, so helpful to have the dyes included for the sentiments. And Pick a Fence does that on most of their die sets, which is really, really nice. Okay, so I'm coming in with 2.4 blue, B2.4, just to add a little shading on the side of the cake. That's gonna make it appear more round. And I'll go back with the 2.2 and just flick that out. It's kind of a swoopy flick motion like this to blend it into the lighter blue. Okay. There's the main part of our cake. All right, now I'm gonna bring in some Y 1.1 and I'm going to color all the stars. Now these stars are kind of tiny, so I am not going to attempt to really shade them the same way I would with a larger image. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a color that is a fair bit darker. I'm going to take a Y 2.3 And I'm just gonna kind of dot where I think there might be a little bit of shading on those stars. Just to give it a little bit of kind of depth, I guess, so it feels like they're not flat. For the super cute piping work at the bottom here. I've got some V2.4. And I'm just gonna fill all this in. And I'm going right over the black line you can see. And then for the 2.6, what I'm gonna do is you see right along the inset part right there. I'm gonna add that, see? So it's gonna make it look more 3D by doing that. And it's just a one little tiny line all the way across. Here we go. I'm gonna color my sun here with that same 2.3 that we used for the darker color on the stars. And I'm going to bring in a darker shade, an orange color. I'm going to bring in a Y02.3. So it's just, it's just yellow orange instead of yellow. We're going to bring that here on the sun rays. And I'm going to kind of dot it a little bit around that cloud just to give that some depth there. Okay, coming together super quick here, you guys. Love it. I'm going to grab my cool grays here 
I'm going to use some CG1 on the clouds and I'm just going to kind of dip right under the little um, V's of the cloud, kind of where the, the, the point of the swoopy. <laughs> yes. Swoopy is a technical term in card making if you're not familiar with it. It's, um, you know, it's very, very important that you guys learn all of these terms I make up. So we've got some coloring under the swoops. Doo -doo. And that's going to just give you the illusion of 3D. Okay. Now I'm going to bring in some RV.2, add a little pop of pink here on the rainbow. Uh oh, I got a little bit excited there and got some pink on my cloud. So I'm going to try and kind of push that back up using the gray. All right, we're gonna do some blue on our rainbow. We'll do that same 2.2. And let's do some, uh, I don't know, let's do a yellow maybe on there. This does not, I'm not trying to follow the kind of normal colors of a rainbow, you guys because there are not enough spots actually. And then we'll bring in some 2.4. We'll add another little pop of purple. Look how sweet that looks, I love it. All right, so this is on a little cake plate and then it's also on a cake stand. On the cake plate, I'm gonna add just a little bit of shading with the CG1 and then I'm going to pull that out farther with the CG0. Okay, now we are going to do our cake stand and I want this to be metal. Hi Vicki, Heather, you're probably laughing at me. That's okay, laugh away. Is it, was it my swoopy comments? Probably. Okay, we're gonna start with CG5. So this is our dark, and I'm just gonna bring it in about an eighth of an inch there. And then I'm gonna just draw one line underneath because that would be shaded. Again, about an eighth of an inch on each side. Again, just a little bit on that little center metal piece. This piece would be underneath, so I'm gonna go all the way under and on the sides. This piece would be underneath, so I go all the way under. And then we'll swoop in. Now on this very bottom part, I'm actually gonna come in farther, you see that, than I did anywhere else. And that's gonna help make it look like the light is reflecting just in the center there. So that was CG5. Now I'm gonna switch over to CG3. Pull that in about a quarter of an inch past where we were before on those sides, an eighth of an inch past where we were on this part so that way we still have that light center This is where that flicking motion comes in really handy. If you're newer to alcohol marker coloring, you can swoop like I'm doing, or you can make tiny circles. Just depends. Some people are more comfortable with doing the tiny circles. And last but not least, we've got some CG1. So I'm just gonna bring that right in the center where the light part would be. Kind of going back and forth real quick into each side. 
And isn't that cool that it creates that illusion of metal? Yep, the swoopy Heather. I know. I'm 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 ridiculous, guys. I'm very silly. I love being silly. All right, let me find my boo boo fixer here. I'm gonna teach you guys a trick. So I've got my zero. I'm gonna bring my heat tool, and hopefully you can hear me over this. Come on, heat tool. I'm gonna turn it on. I know you guys are like, what in the world is this crazy lady doing? But I'm gonna turn it on. I'm gonna use my zero, which is also for Copic, is called um, a, the uh, blender, um, but it doesn't blend anything. It's an eraser. And I'm gonna run this back and forth here until that color disappears. And then I'm gonna immediately hit it with my heat tool and dry it. Why am I doing this? Because that makes it so that the alcohol marker doesn't have time to come back up to the top of the surface of the paper. And it's gonna keep the boo-boo down in the paper where you can't see it. So this is a good trick to try if you have trouble with your blender using it to fix your boo-boos and this is probably fine guys it just only went out a little bit but i'm a bit of a perfectionist when it comes to my edges i it bothers me when i can see any color does it bother you guys you white guys probably can't even see it on camera the other thing you can do if you're like whoa charlene that seems like way too much work is I will also use a white gel pen and just color over the boo-boo. That works particularly well for bold colors like pinks and reds because pinks and reds do not like to leave. They want to hang out on your card in the wrong spot all day long and have a party. Okay. What do we think, guys? Pretty cute, huh? Let's grab the coordinating die. And I had to get some new tape. Look at this glorious full roll of tape. I love, love, love this tape. Now this is Easy C Crafters tape. You guys have probably seen me use um, highlighter tape in the past they're they're literally the exact same thing they're just branded and marketed or not branded differently um, they're marketed different they're both by the same company so either one depending on which one is better priced is what I will grab okay I'm gonna cut this out real quick It just never ever tears anything and you could save it and use it again if you want to um, okay we have our cute little poke out that little piece right there that comes out nice little detail so we have our cute little cake let's put it somewhere I won't lose it back here and we can move on to our next part. Now, last week I showed you guys the super cool inking palettes that just released. And today I wanted to show you, I, I was sad because I didn't have this one in time to show you. Look at this crazy big baby of an inking palette, guys. This is 10 by 10 inches. How amazing is that? I absolutely am in love. This is perfect because you can take this off and you can take one side off or both sides off, whichever you prefer to work with. 
it's sticky on both sides. And this comes off actually pretty easily, easier than other sticky mats I've used. You do have to pull a little bit, but it's pretty thick acetate that's on there. So look, it doesn't like warp. I have some where it like warps when you pull it off, which is really annoying. But let me set this somewhere. There we go. You could put all kinds of things on here, right? You could put 20 different die cuts that you were working on and it's movable or you could take the back off and stick it to your work surface. I like that it's movable because I can color all my die cuts, set this aside, work on some other stuff, pull the die cuts off of there, that kind of thing. But we're gonna use it to stencil. And I'm gonna use the Sprinkles six by eight layering stencil set. I think I forgot to link this guys in the description, uh, the palette, but I will go back and link it afterwards or you can just search for it on the store um, as inking palette and all the different sizes will come up. There's tons of them. I love that there's so much variety. Okay, so this is, how many are there? There's five. This is the Sprinkles six by eight layering stencil set. Uh, and there are five layers, which is really cool. So you can put five different colors of sprinkles and it'll all go in different spots on your card if you want. Totally up to you. You could use as many or as few as you want. So I'm gonna go ahead and start out here with the first one. Now just keep in mind wherever you place your um, stencil you do want to kind of just place it somewhere like back in that same spot again so what i'm actually doing i don't know if you guys can see because this is clear on my glass mat i'm just estimating here i've put it down in the corner and then i'm going to put this guy one inch out by just looking at my glass mat kind of and see if i'm paying close enough attention there we go, that looks about right. Okay, we are going to use some fun colors here. We've got pink, yellow, and blue. And I'm gonna use my pint size paper pouncers. If you guys haven't seen these yet, check out the live I did last week because these are super fun. They're just these cute little babies and come on they are adorable so because I don't want to have my whole um, background covered in sprinkles I just want there to be a couple I'm not going to use all of those layering stencils guys hi Marcia Good morning, Kathy. I'm so glad you're here live. I've been missing seeing you. Oh, hi, Nicole. Hope everyone is doing well. So here's our little cute baby pint size pouncers. I love these so much. You just dab, guys, and then you come in and you pounce. Really easy. So I am going to actually do um, half of this in pink. And I'm gonna do half of it in yellow. Cause like I said, I don't necessarily want my whole card covered in, in sprinkles, my whole background. So it's up to, it kind of just depends on what you're going for, what look you want. But because my little pint sized pouncers are so cute and small, I can do that. I could just use one and color the background with it if I wanted. Now the regular size pouncers would work great here if you were going to do all of the layering stencils. Okay, so we've got some pink and yellow. I think I got all of them. 
So then I can just see how it holds on to the stencil. Look at that. So cute. I'm going to set this aside. I'm going to bring in the second one. Now there are, do you see the little holes? There are holes on there as well, so you could mark if you wanted to. I am not super worried about it. Even if my sprinkles overlapped, I'm not too worried. And I'm gonna bring in the blue now. Oh, did you guys look at the comments, guys? Nicole just dropped a really great tip for if you have um, something stuck in a die. You can set the die down on the inking palette and it's going to stick to the paper that's stuck in the die. So when you pull up the die, you'll get your whole thing out. Oh, that is a great tip. Love it. Okay, so you can see I've come over here. I've done this whole second layer all with this blue. Just making sure I got them all. Now the fun thing is too, let's say I just wanted to use this and I wanted to mix colors, right? I could just wipe off my stencil. It's not gonna move because it's stuck on the inking palette. I could just wipe it off carefully with a paper towel and then I could come along and say like add um, some yellow over the top of the blue sprinkles and get green sprinkles right and that would look really cute too so I'll pull this up there we go so we got some yellow pink and blue sprinkles And now for this last one, what I wanted to show you is some of our new paper glaze velvets. They are so pretty. Give me just a second while I get this all popped on there. Okay, I'm gonna close up these inks because I'll probably stick my hand in one of them and then everything will get ruined. <laughs> and I'm going to close up my paper pouncers. Arlette, yours is out for delivery. Yay! What size did you get? I hope you got the 10 by 10. I can't even not even tell you how cool this is. They're all great, but I when I opened the box and this 10 by 10 was in there, I was like, oh my gosh, that is breathtaking. Okay, this is the Paper Glaze Velvet Soft Pastel Sampler Set. Priced really well, guys. Uh, and it has Paper Glaze Velvet in soft purple, soft green, and soft pink. How pretty is that for springtime, right? Super pretty. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and you can see, look how soft that is. So pretty. Guys, this is the stuff that like dreams are made of, right? And I'm just going to come in and add a couple of pretty paper velvet sprinkles. Grab a baby wipe real quick. Just to keep my tools from contaminating. But you can see I don't need very much at all, right guys? Like you saw that little itty bitty baby amount I put on there. And that's 
going to get me quite a few of these little spots filled. All right. So there was our pretty pink. So pretty. And then our soft pastel green. Hi, Sean. Welcome. Our light, you got the five by six. Oh, that's a good size too. That was the one I used last week. And it was great for holding all of my die cuts in place. Okay. I think I got all the openings. Now, if you ever have trouble getting anything off of your palette, you can always pick it up and just kind of bend it back. Oh, how sweet. Can you guys see that? I've got kind of these little raised pastel sprinkles on there. Makes me want a cupcake. Okay, go in the water. There we go. In the water you go. There. And then make sure I got all that clean. Pull this up and set this aside for a minute to dry. And then you just want to make sure you wipe off your palette. You can wash this with water and a mild dish soap if you want, just like a stamp, guys. You clean it the same way you would clean it with a stamp. You can use clear stamp cleaner. You can wipe it off with a baby wipe. You can use water and um, a towel, whatever you do for your normal stamps will work for the inking palette. Okay, we're gonna set this aside. And we're gonna set this aside. Get these out of the way. Put this back, move this. Okay, clean surface again. All right, what should we do for the sentiment? Uh, let's see. We're gonna have our little sprinkle background here. And then we're gonna have our cute little cake. Um, maybe sweet happiness. Yeah, I kinda like sweet happiness. Let's do that. Where'd it go? Oh, there it is. <laughs> Yep, Nicole, it does dry so nice. I love velvet just has such a yummy texture when it dries. It just looks edible. Now it's not edible. Don't eat it. Um, but <laughs> it is such a beautiful, soft, that's a velvety, right? Uh, texture when it dries. So pretty. Okay, I'm actually gonna just stamp this out back on that same piece of cardstock we were using that we stamped our cake out on. And I'll get my black hybrid ink again. I'm gonna stamp this twice because I want it to make sure it is nice and bold. There we go. And this does stay wet for a little bit, so you could throw some clear embossing powder over the top of it if you wanted to and um, get the shine from that, which would look really nice as well. Let's see if I can find the coordinating die here. I'm betting it is this one. Yes. 
So it fits nice and snug around your sentiment, which is really nice. I'll come back in here and see I can use that same tape I was using earlier. Sorry if my head is in the way, guys. I'm trying to keep it off camera. I think that's about straight. It's kind of hard to do when you're at an angle. Let me hold it up. That's a little crooked. Okay, I think that's good. Okay, good enough. Good enough for a live. Run it through my die cutting machine. And so now we have our sweet little sentiment ready to go. Okay, where are we at on time? Oh, we're doing so good, guys. So good, I'm excited. I don't think I'll go over today, yay. Okay, so that's drying. Now I wanna bring back in that piece that we did earlier with the Arctic Fox. It is still a little bit wet, so thankfully I have one here that I did this morning. It's a little bit drier. And I quickly wanted to show you a fun way to get color on your paper glaze if you're wanting to make a custom blended look with your ink. So I'm gonna get my um, my uh, stencils. So bear with me for a second here. Make sure it is clean. And I have a flour sack towel. This is what I use to dry my stencils. It's also great if you need to quickly clean the ink off of a stencil. You could spritz it with water or rubbing alcohol. And that's why this is all colorful like it is. Then you can just dry your stencil, just being careful. You don't wanna, like I'm going kind of drying this way so I don't push the little pieces up. But there, see like a dried grape. Set that somewhere over there. Make sure this is all dry, okay. So what we're gonna do, we're going to actually pop our stencil back in to the little spots like kind of like a puzzle we're going to pop those in and this one is not wanting to cooperate there we go so once you get it popped in you're going to bring your pint size pouncers guys and your inks. You're probably going, what is she gonna do, this crazy lady? But I'm gonna show you. I had so much fun doing this the other day and I was like, oh, people are gonna love this. All right, check it out, guys. I am going to color the top of my paper glaze. Do you see that? Do you see that pink goodness? I'm so excited about this. Okay, we've got pink. I'm gonna bring the pink down just slightly over that uh, middle line there. Now I'm gonna come in with my yellow. Actually, I'm gonna let that pink dry a little bit. I'm gonna come in with my blue. Same thing. 
I'm gonna go right over this dried paper glaze. And because I'm using an ink that is translucent, you're still gonna see all of that beautiful sparkle and shine and goodness of the paper glaze, but it's just gonna be tinted to this ink color. And rather than trying to like mix your glaze with inks or something like that, this is gonna give you the true color. You're not gonna make a mess by like smooshing out your inks and everything. You're not gonna waste any paper glaze and you are gonna get it exactly in the spots that you want it, right? You don't have to, it's not gonna be like random because you've mixed different colors of glaze, which if you're like me, that makes a big deal. So you could leave it like this. You got this pretty pink, white, and blue going on here, but I'm gonna bring the yellow in and I'm gonna go over my pink. You guys, can you see the magic? Can you see it's going orange? How cool is that? All right, and I'm gonna bring this down. And look at this magic. It's going green. I'm gonna bring in a little bit more blue here and bring that blue up a little bit onto the yellow. There we go. Now watch this amazing reveal. Boom. Are you guys floored? Tell me you're floored because I am in love with this technique. I think it is so cool. Look at that, you guys. Like, Look at all of the shiny, sparkly goodness you have from that Arctic Fox paper glaze but now you have a perfectly blended rainbow. Isn't that cool? Okay. And you can do all kinds of stuff with that stencil, but I thought that was so pretty. And I'm gonna show you my finished card that I did the other day, because I don't wanna spend the time finishing this one off. I wanna finish the other one we've been working on. But I took a stamp from the here it is, from the Lick the Bowl stamps. And there are coordinating dies. I have those now here. But I just stamped this Baker's Gonna Bake, Bake, Bake down here at the bottom. And there's some other sentiments that are thinner that would also fit right here. I know some of the gals on the creative team did that and that looked really cool. And then I took some iridescent moonshine sequins so that it wouldn't take away from that pretty rainbow we had going. And I just placed them around on the card. How fun is that? Quick, easy, and for this one I actually, look, I did it right on the card base, guys. I used 110 pound Nina card base and just did it directly on there. So no extra layers or anything. All right, let's set these aside. Are you guys in love like me? I, I, was, I was so excited when that worked out. I like to play with things and try things out and that made me so happy. Thank you, Sue. Right, Arlette? The this, this sparkle on that Paper Glaze Lux on all of them is beautiful. It's shiny and sparkly and so fun. Thank you, Marsha. Thanks, Karen. Thanks, Nicole. Right, it's so fun. Okay, uh, let me bring back in our sprinkles piece here. And our colored, pretty um, cake here. Now this should probably be just about dry. Yeah, because it's just tiny little spots and the velvet dries very quickly. Um, so I am going to pop, let's see, 
Where is my mega foam roll? I don't know. Hold on, let me get my bits and bobs bag here. I mentioned last time, this is where I keep all my excess pieces from the mega foam tape roll, so that way I can just grab them and cut them with my nonstick scissors as needed. So that's what I'm gonna do here. I'm just gonna cut out a piece that I think will probably fit behind this cake, but I can trim it down if I need to. close. Oh. There we go. And I'll use this. You can always kind of just fit pieces in, right? Cut them how you need them so they fit in all the little spots like I'll just use a couple little pieces here on the edge come on go you can see this is parchment paper that I use when I've cut out a piece of the big roll we do have sheets back in stock as well of the um, foam tape. So if you prefer having sheets versus the big roll, we do have those back in stock finally. It's been hard to get uh, the foam with our crazy kind of world we live in with everything now. Now it's up to you how overboard you go I personally like to just 100% make sure that everything is going to um, stay safe, especially if I'm going to mail this card or something. So I'm going to even put little bits under the under those um, stars, but I might just wait and do that off camera so we don't take up a bunch of time. You also can die cut from this uh, and it does a really great job. Now you don't want to run it through your die cutting machine too many times though because it will flatten out the foam but if you run it through just once with the die cut and make sure your sandwich is appropriate for your die cutting machine, it will cut right through and then you'll have a perfectly sized piece of foam. Look how cute that is. Let's go ahead and put that down. I think I am going to trim, where are we at on time? I've got time. I'm going to trim off the, well, probably, I don't know what size do I want to make it. Let me grab a piece of colored cardstock. Mm, maybe like a, you don't like blue guys? Can you hear me? I hope so. Um, what am I gonna use? Come on, Charlene, get it together. Ooh, let's use, let's use this color. That's pretty. Kind of a tealy color a little bit green what do we think that'll look nice okay i'm gonna trim off and yes once the velvet or the glaze is dry you can run it through a die cutting machine you can run it through your paper cutter not going to hurt anything. Let's see if this looks right. Why does this look crooked, guys? Is it just me or does it look crooked? Is one of these sized wrong? 
Oh, I think it's this one. Come on. Why are you gonna be like that paper when I'm live? Not cool. Okay, that looks pretty good. Come in here with some liquid glue. We do have the precision, well at least as of yesterday we did, I don't know if we still have it in stock, but we do have the precision glue press in stock at the store, which they have been a hot hot thing. I love mine. I think I talked more about it in the last live. So if you didn't watch that, you can always go back and, and watch that. There we go. Hi, Jen. Are you just finished gin dinner? I hope it was yummy. I'm hungry. I ate a breakfast bar this morning, but, um, we get a milk delivery. I don't know if you guys have that service in your area, but once a week we get a milk delivery and the milk company has like all of these other things you can add on to your order. And of course it's all like yummy stuff, right? Like bagels and, and breakfast sandwiches and all these super not healthy for you <laughs> items. But I added some bagels to my order today and they're sitting in the milk box. So I am, I already knew what I'm gonna have is a bagel when I get done with this live. Come off, there we go. Jen, did you see my super cool uh, technique for ink blending over paper glaze? I was, I was very pleased. Let's make sure we get this centered as best we can. I think that looks pretty good. Look good to you guys? I think so. Look how much it adds having that dimension from the foam. It just adds so much to a card. Put our little sentiment down there. And then if you wanted to, you could add some sequins or some little blingy jewels like we have the um, day and night jewel mix where you could use like the silver jewels from there which would look really really pretty so we've got that card and let me pull the other one back over again and we did this card this is ours that we did that's now all dry. And it doesn't come off on your hands, guys. Once it's dry, that ink is dry. It's not gonna come off on your hands. So cute. All right, let me switch you over and see what I missed if I missed any questions. Hi, hello everybody. Let me scroll back through here. Thank you, Kathy. I'm glad you loved it. Thank you, Karen. Let's see, you need Kathy. Yes, you need to try the paper glazes. Don't be afraid, it's so fun. It's only paper and make, make one day just be all about, I'm gonna make backgrounds with paper glaze and experiment. You can do so many fun, 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 fun techniques with them. All right, I think I caught all the questions as they were coming along. So if you guys um, have any questions, let me know. Jen, are you in a different room? Yes, I am. Um, I mentioned it last week. You uh, were, uh, I think, home not feeling well. So I'm glad that you're feeling better. Um, the My oldest son is moving back uh, to Washington this week, actually. So he is gonna go to college, fingers crossed. That's why he's moving back. He's supposed to go in the fall. So he's gonna be home with us for a while before he goes. 
And so we've been playing kind of ring around the rosy with rooms. So I moved into our upstairs loft, which is now my craft room. And then my husband moved into the room that was my craft room. And then his office has become my youngest son's bedroom. And then the bigger of the two bedrooms is going to be my two older son's bedrooms. And then when my oldest goes off to school, he'll still have some place to come back and stay for breaks and things like that. But it's been, it's been a bit of a zoo, a little bit of a zoo. All right, guys, I hope you picked up some tips and tricks today. I hope you try this technique. At the top of the comments, there's the supply list is linked up there. And then also down in the description, everything I used, I will update it also with anything that I missed um, that I ended up using today. So definitely be sure to shop through those links. I would appreciate it. And I, uh, yeah, this release is super cute, you guys. It has all these adorable baking things so much goodness all of the lovely colors this is a great set to have in your stash all right guys i hope you all have a wonderful rest of your tuesday and the rest of your week and i will see you again next tuesday noon central time i'm so excited that we have a set time every week now to hang out i'll see you guys soon bye